Hi everyone, Shane Callan here from Iron Fly Fishing. Today we're going to be tying a river dry fly, an olive power loop. Now, the vast majority of river dry flies that, that you see nowadays are cul de canard flies or CDC flies, and I use CDC extensively. I would say the vast majority of my river dry flies um, have CDC as some component within them. Now, CDC does have its limitations. It's a fantastic material, absolutely brilliant to catch fish, but it does have its limitations. Now, when I speak of limitations for CDC, I'm speaking of two things really. So the first one being when, when there's a lot of wind, when you have windy conditions, CDC um, patterns, the CDC component of a dry fly will tend to sit quite a bit off the, the water surface and as a result can be affected by drag. So during windy conditions, CDC is not really the most ideal um, material to use. Another time that I will move away from CDC dry flies is during a competition. So quite often, if things are difficult, I will have CDC dry flies on, but if there's a number of fish coming quite quickly in a competition scenario, you need to make the most of that. Now CDC, you will have to treat CDC patterns quite regularly. Sometimes you'll have to change the pattern to, to a fresher CDC fly. So when we're talking about hackle dry flies, which an awful lot of people tend to overlook now, apart from sort of parachute and clink hammer style, style patterns. When we're talking about hackle dry flies, we're talking about flies that can be dried out very quickly, can be treated very quickly, but most importantly, can be back fishing as quick as possible. So that's my reason for, for tying this fly for you today. Um, recently on the river there's been kind of quite severe winds, gusting winds, but there's also been quite extensive hatches of olives. So this pattern is one that I use when, when it's quite windy out on the riverbank. So I hope you enjoy. So this is the fly we're going to be tying today. It is an olive power loop and you might be able to see the pink, this little pink cider just at the head of that little strip pull body. Power loop hackle. You can see there's a slight D in the front. That's where I have the, the fluorescent pink post. Now, the post is optional. You do not need to include it. And I'm going to explain that in a moment. So I'll get this one out of the vise and we'll get started. So the hook I'm using is a Partridge SLD2 in a size 14. A Partridge SLD2 in a size 14. Now, the thread I'm going to use is a Vivas B10 in 14.0. This is a brown olive thread. So I'm going to start this thread about one third of the way down the hook shank. And nip off the waist. Now, the tail of this fly is going to be Coq de Leon in a medium pardo. So you want the tail to be quite substantial to give the fly balance on the water surface. So I'm going to take off about 12 fibers, 10 to 12 fibers, and they're going to be the tail. Now you want the tail to be around the size of the hook shank. So I'm going to take that down and I always put in one turn just below the tail, just to secure it and slightly elevate it off the bend of the hook, just like that. Now we're going to whip off the waist there and again leaving that one third free at the front of the hook now the body for this fly like i like i've showed you already is going to be strip quill now i'm using polish quills natural and the reason for using natural i'm going to be letting the tread show out through the quill turns themselves so um Quill bodies obviously give a really nice segmented um, structure to the fly itself, really natural looking pattern. So I'm going to tie that in, bring it up, and again snip off the waist, leaving myself a little bit of room at the front. Now I'm going to put another just another layer of tread down the body, and that should be fine. Now underneath the quill, I'm going to put um, Sally Hansen. A little layer of Sally Hansen. Now, the reason for doing this is to make the fly a little bit more robust. So part of the reason for using this fly is that you can obviously fish it a little bit quicker than the CDC pattern, but you need it to be a little bit robust. Now, you can 
if you want put varnish or resin over the top i prefer not now i'm just going to wind this up sorry i'm just going to wind this up in touching just out of touching turns apologies so i'm going to wind that up not quite touching turns because i want the olive tread to show through now the reason the hackle pliers the reason i do not use um resin or varnish over the top of the quill it leaves the body of the fly a little bit too shiny in my opinion but also adds a little bit of unnecessary weight to the dry fly looks very very nice gives a nice finish to the fly but i prefer the more subdued subtle tone to the body without varnish over the top now the reason for the open turns is to show that olive tread, but also to allow a little bit of that varnish to seep through. Now you see a little bit coming through there, I just take that off. But what that does, it gives the gives the body the body quill just that little bit more rigidity by allowing the varnish to come through between the turns themselves. Now, for the post for my for my power loop, I'm going to use pink aero dry. Now, you do not have to use pink, you can use any colour you wish, but for part of this fly to, to allow you to have that um, pink uh, visibility post, that's why I'm using the, the high vis pink at the moment. If, I'm, if I do not want to use that post, if I want to cut it off, I would just use olive, I'll use grey, I'll use white, whatever colour um, suits the fly itself. So, using pink in this instance, I'm going to tie that on on top. off the weight now you will notice that the aero dry is quite a limp uh, quite a limp material which can make putting a hackle onto it a little bit difficult a lot of people will use a gallows tool so the gallows tool will attach and pull everything nice and tight up like this absolutely fine i'm not using a gallows tool but i there's a little trick that i use for my um my parachutes and that is to use resin so a little bit of Solaris resin. I'm just going to put it on the tray here in front. And I'll get my dubbing needle. Now, I'm going to pull this tight. I'm going to put a little bit of this resin up the actual air dry wing itself. Get my UV laser pen. I will harden everything up. And what you're left with then is a nice stiff post on which you can wrap your hackle. Now, the hackle that we're going to use today is a whiting in golden olive. Saddle tape, really, really nice color. Um, select one that's kind of slightly smaller, smaller feathers, and this is the one I'm going to use here. So, really, really nice color. So, trim off couple of pieces that I'm not going to include and then I'm going to tie that in and just trim off that little bit of waste put down a little layer of tread and I'm going to bring it back ever so slightly just to cover a little bit of that quill body to give myself a slightly larger hackle at the front now the dubbing that I'm going to use with this is a Franking Phillips traditional Irish dubbing and this is in Lake Olive 2. Now you see it's a really nice colour of olive, a couple of different colours throughout it and it has a nice shine off it which catches the sun quite well. So you want a fine dubbing rope. Just put a little bit more. you get that dubbing rope onto the thorax now you want to leave a little bit of space at the front for the post afterwards apologies got ahead of myself does happen especially when the camera's on 
So I'm going to put on my hackle, apologies. So I'm going to leave, leave a little bit of space at the base. I'm going to wind my hackle up. So using that resin aero dry as my post, I'm going to wind that up. And at that point, I'm going to start to bring it back down. substantial hackle there now I'm going to bring everything back I'm going to tie that off so I'm just taking my building out of the way and I'm going to trim off the waist so what you're left with then is your hackle around your post you want the length of the thorax itself and I'm just going to wind that down. Now I can put on my dubbing thorax. So make sure I'm not catching any of the fibers in. And like so. Now the next step is probably the most important step. So you bring your Aero dry up in my right hand. I'm going to pull all of these fibers up and out of the way. So, as many times as you feel you need to. And then, you see it's a little bit stiff because of the resin. What I do is I get one tread wrap over, loose tread wrap, and then I pull that down nice and tight. Brings everything in really, really neat. And then I can get a few more turns in there at the front. Now, at this point, at this point, if I was using a standard color of post, I'd nip that off and that's the fly pretty much done. You could whip finish at that point. But what I want to do with this one is to include that little um, pink post as a cider. So I'm going to pull everything back. I'm going to put one turn in there in front and tie down. see then that post sits directly upright from the hook itself get my whip finish one two and three turns and secure now for the purpose of the video I'm not going to varnish the head obviously you can varnish in any your own time but that's what you're left with you're left with your hackle and then this post sitting upright now like i said you do not need to include this post i'm just including it for kind of broken water i'll tie the same pattern with um an olive an olive um aero dry and i'll just nip that off without kicking it back but what we do here we pull it up and we pull it off and what you're left with then is that little pink cider at the front of the fly now, it does not affect the fish taking that fly at all. I think it's a little bit less intrusive than a standard parachute pattern. But like I said, you do not need to include it if you do not want. And then we just nip off the tread. And that's us. So that is your parachute, um, sorry, power loop olive for windy conditions. Or like I said, sometimes in competitions. Now, I'll just nip off a couple of pieces underneath any stray fibers and that is our fly as you can see gives a really nice profile on the water really robust and can get you back fishing very very quickly in comparison to your CDC patterns so thank you very much for watching um, if you're interested you can follow us on Instagram at, at ironflyfishing. I'd love if you would subscribe to the channel. We're a new YouTube channel. So we really appreciate anyone that subscribes. If it's something you might be interested in in the future. And if you give a like on the video, it would be absolutely great as well. So our next video will be from the River Fane. And hopefully I will get um, a few fish on this fly for you. So you can see the fly in action. Okay, so thank you very much for watching, guys. I will get a picture of this fly now, and 
um, you can see it a little bit clearer if you can't see it too well in the video. Thank you very much for watching.